With all the changing landscapes, we are, I'm sure a lot of people are starting to think like, hmm, what if I'd done something different? What if I made the right choice? And where could I be? What can I be doing that to make sure ensure my future is secure? Those are the things we're gonna be talking about in this episode. Some of you might think it's too late, but there's still time. So let's get right to it. Hey there, it's Lawrence Sam here, your Cairo coach. Now, one of the things I always talk about right now is, is about all the changing landscape. I know every single week is, uh, every single day, it seems like it's, you know, never know what's gonna happen. And I know it's a, a big struggle right now to kind of figure out like, what's the next move? And oftentimes, you know, if you're better prepared for this, and if you've, meaning that if you've done the homework and if you've actually been preparing and knowing about the future, you probably could have prevented a lot of these things from happening because you would have exit plans. And a lot of people don't think that way because most of the time, like investments or you know, thinking about retirement and all those things that we don't really think about because it's like we just think that everybody, every day is going to be exactly the same, every year is going to be the same, and every decade is going to be the same. Unfortunately, things are changing rapidly with through technology, through the, uh, the landscape. Um, obviously, no one expected COVID, but it really kind of puts the question and going, how do we move forward? How do we make sure that we are doing certain things now that could maybe help us better prepare for our future? Now, I know this is a chat that's very difficult to kind of comprehend or even think about when you're in the midst of, of stress, but it doesn't mean that you can't do anything to start thinking about this because I know it was better that we thought about it yesterday, but it's better that today today is the, literally the, the next best day to think about it, right? So uh, this is, I wanna kind of give you some framework to kind of maybe consider, and not these are not the only thing. I was on this podcast today and someone was interviewing me, asking me like, what are the three ways to kind of, how do you stop trading time for money? And I thought, well, this is a really good discussion to start thinking about how do you actually position yourself or what are some of the things you need to kind of work towards to really get create sort of a, an escape plan or a plan B of where you're heading. And that's important because oftentimes most of us really want to be a professional and be a practitioner and we want to serve the community, but you also got to figure out like, what is it doing? What are you doing it for? And obviously I imagine most of you doing it because you want to create happiness for your life. You want to create a lifestyle. You want to create some freedom and you also want to create a great income. So I just thought I'd kind of create this shared share this framework with you to kind of really start thinking about uh, as, you know, as a generic thing of what we're starting from. So, I mean, I would imagine that most of us kind of, we'll, we'll call this the startup. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit. It's a startup practice, right? So the startup practice is that, that style of practice when we're just beginning and we're just starting out somewhere. And we're just basically gotta start somewhere. We gotta figure out how where we go, where are we going? We, everybody starts somewhere and then we will move towards. And then what I tell my, 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 um, my, my clients is that what we're really striving for is we gotta get to what we call profit practice. And why profit practice? Because, well, profit in itself is gonna help us move our mission forward, right? If you don't earn a profit, then how can you be able to use that money to really push the company to actually create more uh, to fulfill your mission or advance your mission? And advancing your mission is, well, whatever mission that is for you. Everybody has a different mission. It's really important to kind of really think about what is your mission? It might be personal. It might be something that's uh, being selfish. It's really about, it's about you know creating more wealth for myself. Or it might be as altruistic to kind of, I wanna really be able to use that, um, a profitability to kind of serve my community to help the homeless or whatever that might be. The answer is dependent on you. It doesn't, there's no right or wrong answer. I think it's really important for you to start to think about this is about your life and you got to decide on, on what that is for you. So really kind of determine what that is for you. And then most importantly, once you figure that out, then you're going to go, why am I, this, that's your why. So then you earn your profit accordingly. Well, where do you go from there? Well, I think after profit practice, for some people, right, not all, for some people, you're going to want to create what we call a freedom practice. A freedom practice is where you are going to get to this position where you are kind of creating the sense of freedom in your in your life where you get to choose what you want to do. If you want to stay in practice, great. But if you don't want to stay in practice, you just want to run the practice or just have the business, then you can. But how do you do that? Well, you got to build a business. You got to build a team to be able to create and generate income and profitability that allows you to walk away and to walk the step away. And so you're not trading time for money. And that's the essential question to think about. And so there's many ways to kind of doing that. I don't really want to, this is not the sense of this particular video, but I, what I want to share with you is like, what happens after freedom practice? What else can, what, what can you do? Well, I think there's three sort of exit ramps, right? That you can kind of go from here and they're all different. And this is going to come down to who you are as a person and what you're striving for. And everybody's going to have a different answer. There isn't one path. And the way I coach anyway, 
There isn't one path to get you there. There isn't one path to get you out because I have a variety of clients. I have clients who build multiple practices and there are clients who just want to be a solo practitioner. And I have clients who want to transition to something different, like being an expert or being a coach or whatever. And so there's many reasons on how you get there. And this is how I can, I think about it from a framework. You move from startup practice to a profit practice, then you, you know, uh, then you create freedom, right? So then obviously the first goal is to create profit and then second is create freedom. For what purpose? Well, one is, I think one of the things that you can do uh, in this, in the realm is that you can scale, right? And how you scale, uh, so uh, there's three ways. So you can got to scale, straddle, oops, sorry, uh, so straddle, and uh, straddle, and then the last one is the slide, right? Because what you want to do is you want to kind of be, you got to remember what you're going to do. Is these are the three ele elements of actually leading towards that 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 uh, the path. And I'm going to explain each path uh, right now. So kind of go straddle and slide. And what are you doing? Well, you, what are you scaling to? Well, so what are you scaling towards is really you can scale towards something that is bigger, where you're actually building multiple practice or maybe having associates in your practice. Well, that's to me, it's like being an executive, right? Really, you're kind of moving your yourself away from um, sorry, executive, uh, you're moving away from just being a operator, um, meaning, sorry, not a practitioner to becoming more of an operator and running, being an executive, being a CEO of a company to being really sort of someone who runs the ship, right? That's obviously what I mean by executive. And so you're going to sort of scaling the business whether within the practice or you're scaling your business by multiple practice. That's one way of doing that. That's not the only way though, right? There's multiple ways of doing this. Well, the second thing is that what I mean by straddle. Well, straddle means that you can really kind of straddle yourself is staying in practice but now you're straddling towards utilizing your expertise to become an expert and what I mean by being an expert is that you let's say you've been practiced for 10 years or so and then in that 10 years I'm sure you learned a lot along the way but I guarantee you most of you have been in practice for long enough you most likely have been specializing in one specific thing that you're really great at that you're you know define yourself amongst any other practitioner and it might be say uh, scoliosis or it might be something to do with uh, right leg pain. I know I'm just making that up, uh, but something really specific, whatever practitioner you are. And when you do that, you, you can actually utilize that and go, what's, how did I, how did I become an expert in that? You, because then you can actually sell your product or services and branch into that. You might be really good at marketing practices. You might be really good at um, you know, building uh, team leadership and culture. Maybe it's about hiring and recruiting. It doesn't actually have to be within the chiropractic realm or the practitioner realm. It might be something the way you run your business. And so in my case, for example, I moved to transition to become a chiropractor to become like a coach, for example. And that's the expertise that I have is that, you know, I have marketing expertise. I have, you know, social media expertise. I have done podcasting expertise. So all of those things kind of blend into, um, you know, to create, a, a, you know, the business I'm in right now, and which is coaching chiropractors to become more successful, create, help them create freedom practices, right? So you can have your thing, whatever that might be. The other one is to obviously slide. When, when you may slide, some people are, you know what? I'm done. I'm retired. I don't really want to, I won't want to do this. I'd actually, I love chiropractic, but I'm actually finished with this business. I actually have something else that I want to move towards. Or maybe you want to be an entrepreneur, or maybe you want to uh, start another business, or maybe you just want to retire. And then now all of a sudden you're sliding in towards an exit. Right, and there's nothing wrong with that. You ought, you should have an exit plan of where you want to be and how you want to exit and when that's going to be. So when you really kind of take a look at this place, you kind of start from this place of startup practice towards earning a profit, towards a freedom, and then really having three options when you come to freedom. Because freedom, you can either become an executive, you can either become an expert, or you can exit your practice. Those are three different ways that three potential ways that you can actually move your practice towards and something to strive for. Why did I tell you these frameworks? Well, the framework is here for it so that you can actually start to think towards the future. What are you doing all of this for? Whether you're starting out in your first year, whether you've been in practice for 20 years, what are you doing all of this for? Oftentimes we don't think about that. We may have started to think about that when we beginning, when we started in practice, but oftentimes we don't change our minds or we never revisit that thought process because we have started having families or we started having kids, or we have other interests. And we forget that the practice just kind of ticks over and we never really think, is there an end point? Is there, are we moving? Think of your practice like a vehicle. Is that vehicle moving towards something? moving towards a specific destination. If it's not, you might re start to rethink about that. Where am I going? What is what is this all for? If you don't answer that question, you're just going to get stuck in this rut of just continue doing the same thing over and over again. And you're going to come to a point where you're going, man, 
what did I do this for? What did I waste my time for? What my, and, and, and you might have missed opportunities along the way that you could have ex, uh, had an exit ramp toward moving towards something that maybe got you more excited. If you're stuck right now, if you're feeling like um, not in the right position or feel like you're not in the right place, maybe you should start asking the question, what are you doing this for? That reflective question doesn't mean you're gonna be able to exit tomorrow. I'm not, all of these things are, takes years to plan, but you need to have a path. If you don't carve a path, it's going to be much more difficult if you don't uh, to, to kind of execute this. So that's all I'm saying is really kind of put this out there to really kind of look through the lens of going, where am I going? What am I doing all this for? Then that gives you an opportunity to really kind of figure things out. So I hope this is helpful for you right now to really kind of start thinking about what is the future hold? What am I doing this for? And then what are the steps I need to take in order for me to execute that plan or at least move in that direction to test whether or not that's something of interest. Nothing happens like that. Most of the time, everything takes planning. So it's my wise to plan yesterday, but the best day to plan is starting today. So I hope that's been helpful. Go share this video if first for those who people who need to hear that. Comment below, let me know what you think. I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook, and also obviously on Instagram. And also just go check out um, you know, your Cairo coach on podcasts and Spotify and on, on Apple Podcasts, wherever you, you hear, listen to this. Hope this has been helpful. If you want to watch the video, go to YouTube and check that out. All right, I'll talk to you soon. If you want to kind of get some perspective and, and you know, want to figure out how to get to a profit practice or how to get to a freedom practice, then go check out um Go check, joke, go check out joinnitro.com and then get a perspective of joinnitro.com uh, to actually get some uh, idea of what we do and how we can help people transition from a startup practice to a profit practice to a freedom practice. We'll talk to you soon. It's all well and good to have a successful practice, but in the grand scheme of things, I want to make an impact. The biggest thing that it's enabled me to do is to develop better relationships with people. The reason I joined was because I was feeling a bit isolated in practice. Now I feel like I have a try. Florence definitely provides a really good insight from outside of my square. You really start to find your true identity. When you're part of a group that supports you, which is what I feel Nitro does, you get some quality results. I was caught up in the hustle side of chiropractic, so now having that freedom still being just as busy and even more successful. I think that we all elevate and rise together. It really allows me to face my own fears and blockages. about being with like-minded people, but being about people who want the same thing, which is like this willingness to support each other and hold each other accountable at the same time. We went from seeing an average of 140, 150 people to seeing now 250 people. I do have the confidence to you know, have that voice and make those changes, and I definitely wouldn't have been able to do that without Nitro. It's not trying to create me to be something else. It's trying to create me to be the best version of me.